Lucia is an auth library that takes away the complexity of handling user sessions and auth session while giving you a very easy to use database adapters depending on your needs and wants. Now here's the situation with current authentication providers. You have stuff like Clerk and Auth that abstracts away almost everything you need and, and lets you focus on implementing the important stuff like sign up and sign in. However, there's too much abstraction and you don't have full control over everything like no control over how passwords are hashed or users are stored. And basically it's unopinionated about how you store them in a database. In fact, it has its own user management system that is separate from your main application database. And then there's stuff like AuthJS Passport, and then you can bring in your custom authentication service. You can implement your own from scratch, but that comes at a cost of security because you, ha you have to handle very complex situations and little nuances that, that no regular developer with absolutely zero cybersecurity experience would think about. And basically you're you're giving the, yourself the opportunity to shoot yourself in the foot. So Lucia aims to bridge the gap between both methodologies by bringing you easy to use APIs and giving you all the utility functions you need to create an authentication service in your application. So, so while it doesn't give you stuff like sign in and sign up functions, it gives you th things you need in order to create that function. So basically it's like you create your own adventure story with Legos and stuff like that. And there's an adapter for almost every da major database you can think of. Uh, there's Drizzle, MongoDB, Postgres, MySQL, you name it. To get started, you'll have to create a new web application project. In my case, I use the Next.js app router, but you can also use Solid Start, Svelkit, and so on. And once you do that, you run npm install Lucia Oslo. Now Oslo is a package that is used for the un underlying uh, functionality of Lucia and this is used for passwords and stuff like that. Once you have everything installed go ahead in the lib folder create a new file called db.ts. This is where we initialize our database and create create sort of a database schema for users. First you start by creating a client, in my case I use MongoDB. Afterwards you create a collection object and then you define the types for these collections. And if you're on TypeScript. Now, once you're done with this part, go ahead and create a new adapter object so you can use it later in the Lucia, Lucia object to initialize the, the auth construct. Now you wanna add an extra secure attribute so that, uh, it's, so that it returns true when you're using uh, HTTPS, but this is only during uh, production, not during development. And then you add a get users attribute function in the Lucia object. Afterwards, we create a function that will validate the incoming uh, request, whether a user is signing up for the first time or, or a returning user signing in. Then we create an asynchronous function that returns a user and a session object. Then you then from the cookies of from the cookies we get the session ID, and then from that session ID we we validate the session using the validate session function. Afterwards, you run a try and catch block, and this is because uh, Next.js uh, throws an error when you set a cookie while the page is rendering. And we check if there is a result session, there's a session object or whatever. If there isn't, it is gonna set the uh, cookie, the session cookie. However, if there is gonna create a new, create a, uh, already a set existing session cookie. If there isn't, uh, it's, it's gonna create a blank session cookie. Now you return the uh, result, and last but not least, you declare the Lucia module with the correct type definition since we're, since we're using TypeScript. So stuff like the Lucia object, and then the user at the database attributes like the username and our hashed password. And that is pretty much all of the heavy lifting done for us. Now we can go ahead and create server actions like sign up and sign in using the functions that we just created. So go ahead and create a, uh, an actions folder and then create one for login and log out. So in this login server action, we first get the username from our form and then we check if this username follow, uh, follows a certain criteria such as, such as the length if it's shorter than three characters and or bigger than 31 and if it doesn't follow this regex pattern, so lowercase and lowercase numbers, then it's going to return an error and refuse to log us in. 
Then afterwards we get the password and then we do some validation on it. Normally you use something like Zod, but for the sake of this tutorial, we were just uh, adding a condition, basic, con basic conditionals. Now after we validate the username and password, we'll check if the user exists in our MongoDB database. If it, does, if it doesn't, we'll throw an error. Otherwise, uh, go ahead and check if the password is valid. Uh, check the input password against the hashed one that we stored in our database. Then throw an error if they're throw an error if the password is incorrect. Afterwards, you handle stuff like sessions and session cookies, and then you redirect the user back to the home page. Now, for the logout, this is fairly fairly simple. You just validate the incoming uh, logout request. If the user is unauthorized, return an error. Otherwise, just invalidate the session, set the set the cookies to blank, and redirect the user back to the login page. Last but not least, we just need to hook it up to our front end. So, we, so login page.tsx, and this is just a simple HTML page with like form with a form and stuff. Same here for the sign up when we're creating a new user. Basically, the sign up function. Uh, I forgot to put this in a separate uh, server action file, but whatever. Mostly, it's pretty similar to the login um, logic, except that we're uh, instead of uh, creating Instead of uh, doing these uh, database checks, we're basically going to uh, create the Aragon. Basically, we're going to uh, call a function to hash uh, the password using Aragon2ID from the Oslo library that I mentioned earlier. Then we create, uh, an ex create a new document in our MongoDB collection. Then we set cookies and all that, all that shenanigan. And then we redirect the user to the home page. And that's pretty much it. We're almost done. And then, of, co of course, once we're logged in and stuff, uh, we can go ahead and redirect the users to a lot. Go ahead and display this page, user.username. Now, the user, we, uh, we destructure that from our valid request function because this is one of the things that our, our validate request function returns is a user object. Now, as you can see, I'm already logged in, but I'm going to sign myself out. And then right here, we're going to go ahead and uh, create... A new a new user. I forgot now. I forgot to add a link for like a button for signing up. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the sign up page manually. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a new user just to demonstrate everything. So test test one two three four, and then you click continue. And as you can see, it automatically signs you in. It says hi test. I'll switch over to my MongoDB database. This is a user my user that I already created with the hashed password. I'm going to refresh the database and as you can see, boom, bang, there it is. Username test and our hashed password. And if you look here in our sessions database, you can see that our expiry uh, date has been updated. So expires a month from now, so April 7th. Now I'm going to go ahead and sign out again. Perfect. There it is. I mean, that is pretty much it for basic uh, authentication with Lucia, I guess. Now, uh, there are t there's a tutorial on GitHub, for example. Uh, it does support OAuth, obviously. So you can go ahead and read up about it right here. You know, it's step by step guide on how to set it up with uh, Arctic, which is the library that Lucia recommends you to use for implementing OAuth functionality in your application. You can read up about it later, but that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want more awesome content like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Peace. Ramadan Karim. I'll see you next time.